Afternoon, guys. I guess, first of all, when, when you look at Michigan and the things that they do well, what jumps off the page first? Obviously, the number four in the country, I get that, but what jumps off the page most? Uh, you know, one of the things I always try to look at is how do teams score their points, right? Because a lot of times that tells you a little bit their identity in football, you know, who they are as a team. 19 rushing touchdowns, eight receiving touchdowns. Who does that tell you their identity, right, you know? Right. Now, some of that obviously is distorted. Some of the games they had early in the season, you know, they got up on people and they ran the ball more. Um, but you see a very effective and efficient running game. Uh, you know, Coach Harbaugh has been known for that for a long time. Uh, so you see that right away. You see uh, effective and efficient quarterback play. Right. Just in, in you know, in, in who McCarthy is and how they you know, ask him to operate. Uh, and then you see effective and efficient tight end play. Effective and efficient wide receiver play, right? You know, they, they, they don't create negatives for themselves. They don't put themselves in bad, in bad spots offensively. Uh, and so that's probably, you know, you just see the, the effectiveness and efficiency through the whole offensive system, and they don't put themselves in bad spots. And, you know, and then they can just stay on track, stay on course, take their shots when they want to take them, you know, you know ask the quarterback. You know, they asked him to do a lot. It's not just a game management. Uh, you, you, know, you know, old Trent Dilfer with the Ravens, right? You know, just don't screw up the game. That's not the situation with them at all. Uh, but they know, the, they know what they're asking him to do and ask him uh, to do things that he does well. Coach, it seems like every week we're kind of asking you about Desan McCullough, but a guy like him that's just now five games into his college career, how often are you guys still trying to find him some situations without – uh, putting too much on him, and then in those situations, what are you seeing that's allowing you guys to get him on the field even more? Sure, you, you know, just effective and efficient. Keep asking him to do the same things over and over, right? How, how do you help a young man grow? How do you help a young man improve? You ask him to do the same things over and over, and you keep coaching him on the same drills. You keep coaching him on the same fundamentals. You keep putting him in the same situations. You don't go wholesale drastic changes on him, so especially for a young player, he can – just do the same things repetitively over and over and over. And, and that's really what we're attempting to do with the son. Just keep asking him to do the same things over and over. Allow him to get good at those things right? and keep developing in that, right? So he can become effective and efficient. Uh, Chad, forgive me. I, I don't know if you've prepared for Minnesota when you were at Michigan, but it, you're, sorry, not, you know what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, Flip good. him around. There we yeah. go. It's a long day. Um, What's the balance you strike? You talk about their identity just a minute ago when you've got different offensive coordinators, they change year to year, right. but the head coach doesn't change, and so you, you kind of have that, that mesh of what the offensive coordinator is going to want to call, what he's going to be comfortable with, but also what the head coach is presumably going to kind of make sure stays there no matter who it is. Sure, and that, that's to the point a little bit. How do you become effective and efficient and become, keep doing the same things over and over? You certainly do see the continuity and consistency from – Jim Harbaugh, regardless of who the coordinator is and who is calling the plays, who is not calling the plays, you see the the, the continuity and consistency. And uh, so, yeah, you know, again, go back and watch Stanford. You know, right when Harbaugh was there, would they have that big O line and big tight ends, and they use their tight ends. And what do you see from these guys? Big O line and you know, effective and good tight ends, and you know, effective in the run game, and you know, it just sets everything else up for them for who they want to be. Uh, so, I, you know, I think that is, is you know, very accurate, you know, is, is you see Harbaugh's thumbprint on that thing, you know, wherever he's gone and how he wants to, you know, how he wants to you know, manage the game offensively. Coach, um, Coach Allen mentioned that he thought the defense kind of got fatigued at the end of the Nebraska game, kind of as a result of the offense not being able to stay on the field. I guess first, did you see the defense kind of tiring out at the end of the game? And how do you balance, um, you know, rotating guys while also knowing in the fourth quarter that, you know, you want to get your best guys out there? Yeah. Well, and that's exactly it, Jack. It's, it's you know, it's, we are, and we've talked about this for a while now, we are attempting to play as many guys as possible. So as we get to the fourth quarter, our, you know, the, the best players are still fresh and they're still uh, have, have, you know, gas left in the tank, so to speak. Um, but then, uh, you know, as you play that and you manage that through the game, obviously, 
you, you know that young players are going to have some mistakes sometimes. And, uh, you know, we're continuing to coach those guys through that. And uh, you know, those guys are going to be held to the same you know, standard and expectation. If, hey, if you're in the game, you're a starter. And you have to play that way, whether it's first quarter to fourth quarter. Um, but, you know, it's still on us to go out and respond to. You know, I can't disagree and say that, man, you know, sitting there on play 75, we were as fresh as we were on, on play five. Um, but regardless, the expectation is go out and perform a certain way. And young guys have to make sure that they're playing at play 25 or play 45 or play 55 so that guys go out there and play 75, that they are as fresh and as capable as they were at play five. And uh, so, that again, that, that's going to be the expectation for us. We're going to continue to play a lot of guys. And you're in the game, you're a starter. Whether you started the game or not, you're playing now. And your expe the expectation is to play you know, at that level as a starter. Hey, Chad, how are you? Hey, Dustin. Good. Um, to go back to the mistakes thing, I think we, we spoke to James earlier, and he said that's the thing that stands out is just he, he used the term crazy mistakes, I guess. What's, what's standing out there? I mean, you see, is it missed assignments? Is it guys getting out of their lanes to try to do something more? I mean, what, are, are you seeing a thread to the mistakes? You know, it, you know we talked this morning. We, you know, we meet on, on Monday mornings. We talked about being 11 strong. Right, and you know we actually have eleven position groups on the entire team, but you also obviously play with eleven players, and and it's all eleven of those guys being on on concert, you know, playing together, uh, and executing, uh, you know, to the best of their abilities. Nobody's got to go be Superman. Hey, yeah, we're playing number four team in the country. Great, right? They're a great, great team, but nobody's got to go out there and be somebody different than they're not. Right? That's uh, nobody has to go be Superman and make every play. All you got to go out and do is be a man and do your job. And that's what we're going to keep, uh, you know, pushing our guys and challenging our guys is, hey, just be a man, right? Be accountable. Do your job, best of your abilities. We can do that, you know, put it all together. And again, the consistency part of it, and have 11 guys working in concert, concert and coordinated together. We can play really good defense, and, and that's the challenge every week is just get them locked in the fundamentals, the details of their job, the assignments, and the execution of their job, and play really, really hard doing those things. You know, so that you know that's that's why they call us coach. Yeah, that's why he calls coach. Just keep, we talked about what's the meaning of the word coach. You know, get them from point A to point B, right? And that's what we're going to keep doing. Keep coaching, keep trying to get these guys from point A, where they are in their execution, the fundamentals, the understanding of the scheme, assignments, get them to point B, eventually to point C, point D, you know, and keep, keep taking them down that road. Uh, but that's, you know, that's the, that's the goal. So, and to, again, to be consistent in that teaching for Desan, for you know Jalen Williams, for you know Aaron Casey, whoever those guys are, just be consistent in the teaching of that. Coach uh, Lewis Moore had a big play against yeah. Nebraska. Um, I guess what has just stood out um, about him, and, and obviously a JUCO guy coming in. Just how have yeah. you kind of seen him develop? Yeah, one, uh, you know, I really appreciate Lewis. He's extremely grateful and appreciative for where he's come from. You know, he's just appreciative and thankful for the opportunity he has here. Uh, and so he has really just come in very humble, uh, with a great mindset to work. Uh, and you, you see him, you know, we, we saw right away the first time he ever walked out, he's got a great skill set. Um, but he was a wide receiver, actually, and, you know, for a good part of his junior college career. So he's still learning the position, learning how to play defensive back. He's, again, he's got a fundamental athletic skill set that's really, really talented, but he's still learning how to play the position. But that's one of the ways that we're trying to do, again, you know, playing the nickelback in some of our third down stuff. Give him a role, give him a job, and, hey, go focus, you know, Desan McCullough, go focus on this job. Go focus on this role. But you can focus on that. Now that takes some reps and off of Noah Pierre and our base down stuff. You know, so, that, you know, just trying to bleed that and give him a role, give him a job. Hey, man, if we can get, you know, you know 10, 12 great plays out of you, right, playing, you know, in that, in that third down package, execute that, develop that, and then we keep growing and expanding it. But you know, he really has embraced that and uh, is working really hard. I'm really proud of Lewis for that. Hey, Coach, I'm wondering if you can elaborate and go into your philosophy with the game on the line, like where you're looking for, like, player, player rotations and, like, who's playing. Sure. Well, you, you know, you want your best players on the field right, when, it, when it counts the most, that's for sure. But, you know, sometimes the best players are the guys that are – the freshest, uh, and so that's part of it too. You know, the guys that can go out and play as hard as they can. Uh, but yeah, you want your best players, and uh, you know, again, the expectation you're on the field, and you're playing like a starter. Um, sometimes those things are situational too. What are they doing offensively? You know, what personnel groupings are they in? You know, so you're always you know working to evaluate that. But yeah, you want your best. When it counts the most, you want your best players on the field. There's no doubt about that. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Have a great Monday.